Hey Oliver, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, all good? Yeah. Take a seat please, and uh, we'll have a nice chat. Come stai? Bene. Meglio, meglio. <laughs> We're not going to go into the to the Italian, but uh, uh, one thing I will ask you about is, you know, how are your first uh, months in Florence and how you're getting on, the language, the culture, how are you feeling? No, I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling very good. Um, people are very nice here in, in, in Florence, uh, and you really feel the passion about the about the club, about Fiorentina. Um, Everywhere you go, especially when the first uh, month, month when I was here, I didn't have a car, so I was taking the taxis, and uh, there was a lot of uh, passionate taxi drivers in the city, so that was that was really nice, and uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy the the city, and uh, here in here in Florence, you can you can uh, do a lot of a lot of stuff, and and also for for my girlfriend, it's. Uh, that's really nice to live in a city where, where you have a lot of a lot of things to do, and uh, you can eat uh, very nice food as well. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's really really good. And and people are people are very nice here. Yeah. Can you eat the food actually? Yeah, of course. Some some of the <laughs> some of the food, of course. I, I don't I don't eat a lot of beef. Uh, I do it sometimes, but it, it is not the, the food I, I I eat the most. But I have I have already tried the the Florentine uh, steak. You have, uh, yeah, yeah. I have, I have, I've tried it one time, um, and it was really, really delicious. And um, yeah, the, the the food is uh, the food is really, really nice. Okay, let's start from um, from you as a as a child. No, your first uh, steps into football. Um, talk us through that as well. Like, what's what it's like? Of course, you know, at the start, it's just you know pure passion. Yeah, of course. When you're when you're a kid, is. Um, it's a game, uh, and, and you're having fun with it, and, and you you play football all the time uh, in the in the breaks in the school, uh, after the school, and, and I was uh, I was a very uh, had a lot of energy as a kid. So sometimes even uh, during the school day, they they set me out with the ball. Otherwise, you go outside for for ten minutes and uh, use some of that energy, and then you come back and and try to sit still. And um, yeah, everything was about football. Basically, when I was a kid, um, of course in Denmark, you, in the, during the winter months, you can't really play football because it's too cold and um, there wasn't really a lot of uh, artificial pitches uh, back in the day. But um, yeah, we, we were every chance we got, we we went out with the with the ball and then I was playing. So it was yeah, it was uh, it was a really nice time and. Um, and uh, the, the passion about uh, football just yeah just kept growing during my during my childhood. Were you were you always a goalkeeper? <laughs> no, uh, you know in the beginning you you try different positions. Like I started when I was six years old, and I was trying different positions the first couple of years, and and then when I was eight nine years old, I started to say to to, to the coach, okay, I I, I want to be a goalkeeper. Also because I was I was the best in our team. In, in the goal and yeah I, I I I was a little bit crazy when I played out <laughs> out in the field. That's what they say uh, about every goalkeeper. Yeah yeah I was a little bit too crazy. crazy. Yeah I was a little bit too crazy and uh, I think maybe some of the parents also were like it was a little bit dangerous dangerous for for their kids to to play when I when I was outside. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, what would you do? No no I was just uh, uh, yeah I don't know I, I didn't really. Uh, yeah, I, I was just tackling hard, and uh, yeah, I was 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 getting easily angry and made a lot of free kicks. <laughs> <laughs> so it was better. It was better for for me and also for the other kids that, that I was in the goal. Yeah. Did you bring some of that um, mentality, you know, to your professional life as well, or did you calm down a little bit? No, I calmed down a little bit because it was um, during my early teenage years it was getting a little bit uh, out of hand and uh, I was getting uh, really frustrated uh, actually and, and, and it was like destroying uh, it could destroy some trains for me and also some games that, that I couldn't focus on on the game if something happened that something didn't go the, the way that I wanted I, I was yeah I was, I was getting in my, in my feelings and uh, and yeah but I, I had a 
Early on, I had a mental coach, and and we we really worked on that. Uh, and, and now is uh, now you won't you won't you, you you will you will see it sometimes that I'm getting frustrated, but 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 not the uh, not the way I did when I was a kid. So you sort of had some anger issues, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. were able to channel it, yeah, exactly. you know, in the right direction. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, I mean, what kind of thing would you do on the pitch? Oh, uh, I would. Arguing with the referee. Sometimes I argue with uh, my coach. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I try to kill the post. Uh, and also, I, I injured myself a couple of times uh, because I was kicking the post so hard. And I broke a couple of toes one time because I kicked the post so hard. Like proper boom. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I was I was so embarrassed about it that I just. After two weeks, uh, uh, I said, "Okay, I, I have to go." And you were about, you know, how old? Maybe yeah, I was 14, 15 years old. And you started working with a mental coach at, at that age. Yeah, already? at that age. Yeah, I think it was after uh, after the incidents, more or less. Uh, I started to. to where to where were you playing at the time? I was playing in uh, Odense. Odense. Yeah, I was playing in Odense. And did the club help you with, you know, having a mental coach? That was, was my parents. Your parents? Yeah, it was my parents. Because it was, yeah, it was, like I said, it was getting a little bit out of hand. And, 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 and it was, uh, I had a hard time uh, uh, concentrating when, when some of these things happen. If I made a mistake and it led to a goal or or if I felt like the ref were, were whistling against us. And, and, and that's... Uh, yeah, that's important as a, as a football player that you can you can cope with those things and, and, and still focus about the game because yeah I never seen a ref uh, uh, whistle a penalty and, and then take it back not back then yeah, yeah. now now they can do it because of the bar of course but but back then it, it didn't help anything and it didn't benefit me uh, at all and, and, and yeah, so it was it was a quite important thing for me to to like get control of and, and use it the right way to to uh, to play 90 minutes uh, perfect. So the mental coach helped you. So at the time, did you think that was like a, a massive setback in your trying to become a professional, or were you not really thinking about a career in football? No, yeah, for sure. I I, I always wanted to to be a professional football player, and and, and that was for sure one of the biggest obstacles for me that that that, that uh, if something didn't go right that I couldn't yeah I couldn't cope with it I couldn't handle it and, and, and then it was affecting my performances and uh, yeah one mistake led to another and uh, yeah, as a goalkeeper you now I, uh, I've learned that, that yeah, you can make a mistake but but you can still you can still have a, a good game afterwards and, and it's important that you don't let the mistake affect you during the game and then you can like deal with it after the game okay what went wrong sometimes also mistake happens that you you can't really explain what what is uh, why why did this happen uh, and that's uh, and I think that's a, a really really important thing for a goalkeeper that, that you can you can during the that you during the game you can let things go and then you can work with the with the stuff afterwards and, and that's yeah, that's for a goalkeeper, I think, is one of the most important things. Yeah, they say that about some of the best goalkeepers in history, that one of the abilities was to overcome mistakes, you know, yeah. not let them affect you. Um, about being a goalkeeper, we chatted right here in the same spot with Fabiano Parisi, and he said the most difficult position is the goalkeeper right now, because it's not just about not letting goals in with your hands, but a lot of playing with your feet. Yeah. Uh, I was still quite surprised that was his his answer, to be honest, uh, because nobody ever thinks about the goalkeepers uh, as much as you think as other uh, at other positions. You know, no. um, do you do you think it's the hardest position? I, th I think it's the uh, I think it's the position where you have to be the most complete football player because you have to be very good with your hands, you have to be very good with your feet, you have to to have courage, uh, you have to uh, be really really strong mentally, uh, and and you have to I think it, you really have to be the most complete football player you, because you also have to you have to be able to play with both feet. You you have to do a, a lot of things, and you see now that the best goalkeepers in the world, and there is nothing that they can do, uh, like uh, Alisson, Edison, Neuer. Uh, Who's your favorite? Uh, oof, I I don't really have a favorite, but I have a lot of 
goalkeepers that I really like. Uh, I really enjoy to watch them play. Like the two Brazilians, Edison and Allison, uh, is really it's really amazing to to watch. Um, I, I also really like uh, I really like Donnarumma. I think he's ama- he's my age, you know, yeah, he's from '99, huh? and he played I don't know 300, 350 professional football games. And I think that's that's unbelievable, and, and that's like his mentality from a very young age has been extraordinary and, and, and I think that's uh, yeah that that's something that I really uh, I admire that by him that he was able because when I was 17 I, I would not have been able to do what he did even though I came out young as well in Denmark um, but but to do that 16 17 that's that's really special and also in a in a club like uh, AC Milan it's not like uh, there's no expectations yeah I know that's that's Insane. Well, I mean, your career is still very early days as well. Odense, then Erta Berlin, now Fiorentina. Um, what was it like going abroad so young? Because, I mean, you're still very young and Germany isn't Denmark, of course. No, no, of course it was difficult uh, because I moved out from my parents' house when I was 19. and uh, I, But I was still 20 minutes away from them, so I could see them yeah, whenever I wanted, basically. And moving to to Berlin is, is different because you just you don't drive to your parents and eat uh, <laughs> and eat dinner and then you go back and it's it was difficult obviously and because I'm very close to my family I, I, I spend a lot of time with them when I'm when I'm back home and, and uh, I think that's the, that's the most difficult thing about it uh, really to 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 play uh, abroad and that's you you miss your your family and your friends and and uh, and the city that I'm from that I that I really love to be in and, and that's uh, yeah that's basically uh, that's the only thing that I can that, that I can think of that is that is like a downside with uh, with football and um, but they are really good to to come and visit me and uh, now it's a little bit longer for them yeah. to, to go to to Italy because Berlin was uh, six hours by car. From my hometown, and now they have uh, oh by car they have like 18 hours. Yeah, right? it's but a with the plane. It's a proper trip. Yeah, with the plane is okay. There's also a lot of airports close to to Florence. Obviously, there's Florence, but uh, I think it's not every day. There's a direct yeah, flight. Yeah, no, Pisa, uh, but there's Bologna. Pisa, Bologna. You can also go to Rome or Milano, and then go by the. So uh, you're already an expert. You know your way around. Yeah, yeah, I know my way around, and also when I have to look look for tickets for my family. Uh, uh, I, I have to. I have to know all the possibilities for for them to come here. Regarding Denmark, obviously you have one cap for for the senior team, but under twenty one you even played at the Euros. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about that experience. You know, representing your country. Uh, if it's something you know you absolutely want to do. Yeah, of course. Uh, I think there's no greater pleasure than. than, than Representing your country, and uh, and it, it, it's, reg- it's regardless of it's uh, under 16, 17, 18, you, you have a special feeling when you when you're representing your country, and, and, and that's obviously also one of my one of my goals in the in the future to to get back into the national team and and, and uh, representing my country, and uh, yeah, I had, I had some very nice experience. Uh, uh, so far with the with the national team, I was uh, the World Cup in Qatar with the with the national team. Uh, we had a great run with under 21. We we, we played this uh, in my span. I think we played 16 or 17 games and we didn't lose. Uh, and we played strong uh, strong nations as well, like uh, Germany, France. Uh, uh, Romania was had a very very good team at the point also. And, and yeah, we. We really had a, a great team, and, and there was um, some very nice experiences. And um, yeah, it's it's just it's just nice to 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 be able to represent your country. Yeah, Denmark, and I mean, recently have done really really well, and I mean, a lot has happened. Uh, not just about the football, of course, but um, it's one of those uh, those national teams that you can always you can sense there's a progress and. You know, maybe next time it's going to be their tournament, and it's quite exciting. I think one of those hipster international sides that a lot of uh, neutral fans support as well. 
Yeah, for sure. I think Denmark, they, we are a small country, like Croatia, for example. Yeah. I also have done really well over the last years. And uh, I think now you see that a lot of Danish players is uh, is getting to, to to play in the in the big leagues. And, and Who's never, your favorite Danish player? <sighs> My favorite Danish player? Um, I don't know. Uh, I have uh, some very good friends as well uh, that I like to to watch play, uh, and uh, my favorite Danish player. So you don't want to let any of your friends down. I don't want to let any of my friends down, uh, really. But uh, but obviously, uh, some of the goalkeepers I like to watch play: Schmeichel, Bueno. They're uh, really talented, and I uh, was really enjoying um, getting to, to to train with them. Uh, with the national team and, and uh, they are really really good and really, really strong and uh, they are very good at giving uh, advice as well so I say I like I like to watch them play I obviously have some friends as well that uh, that I support sometimes uh, I have a good friend in, in, in Benfica Alexander Bar that, that I also like watch uh, play and Jakob Brun Larsen is also my my close friend in, in Burnley uh, if I would have the possibility to watch him play I, I do that as well so so that's um, I have some some nice friends in the national team. What are you know? What are the main differences between life in in Denmark and Italy? Was there anything that you landed here and you were like, "This is absolutely shocking"? I would say that the, I never tried to, to train in, in in 36, 37 degrees. I never tried it before, so that was like that was really difficult for me. Like the first week, I was. I was uh, I was struggling a little bit with the with the weather because it was so hot. Uh, you know, in Denmark, if we have a um, good summer, we have 25 degrees. There is a big difference from 37 to 25. So it's not just a stereotype. <laughs> no, no, no. Really, it's 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 uh, the summer here is is really hot, and uh, and of course, um, I think Italy is a uh, is a uh, it's very. Like the buildings are old, but it's really nice. It's really, uh, uh, it's really romantic. Uh, a lot of places in Italy, and, and I love to go to Italy on vacation. I was actually the, the summer I was also in, in Italy for vacation with my with my girlfriend, and I've uh, been a couple of times. Uh, we've been also to Cinque Terre one time, Luca, uh, some of the beautiful places uh, you, we have here uh, in Italy, and, and and it's just uh, yeah, it's a really nice country, and, and I always. I like uh, I like Italians because they are very um, they're very diff- different from from Danish people. They are they are very um, active with the with the way they talk and <laughs> and, and you you know uh, exactly like today I was uh, my girlfriend and I was having a coffee this morning and you just people are just talking to each other, laughing, having a good time and and talking talking very loud, laughing and and, and that's. Yeah, that's this. I think that's that's uh, that's very nice. I mean, I'm sure people have a good time in Denmark. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But but here you you can really you can really you can really feel it more than in Denmark uh, because people are a little bit people are a little bit louder, a little bit uh, more. Uh, they don't care so much uh, about uh, about what what people. F- yeah, maybe a bit more outgoing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, a bit more outgoing than than Danish people. We are a little bit more quiet and. and we don't want to attract too much attention to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but that's I, I love that about uh, about Italy. Uh, sometimes I'm just uh, if something's happening and people are you know coming quickly and checking it out and yeah it's, it's really nice. It's really cool. nice. It's, it's one of the different. So you told us a little bit about Italy and Florence. What about Fiorentina? What it means to you to play for this club? Your relationship with the coach. Uh, with the president uh, Rocco Comiso, who's obviously done so much for Fiorentina, and you know, we, you know, we're inside the Viola Park now, and we've seen um, what it means for Italian football. So, um, what does it mean to you being here? Well, obviously, it's, uh, Fiorentina is a very well-known Italian club in Denmark because um, have some some they had some great Danish players here uh, back in the day. Uh, yeah. uh, I actually think that Martin Jurgensen he was captaining uh, yeah, a yeah, couple of, of seasons for for Fiorentina. Pierre Coltrup also uh, was also having a good span of years here. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember very well. Yeah. yeah, Champions League. Exactly, Champions League, and uh, it's a it's a it's a big club. Also, 
outside of Italy. Uh, I think the, the, I don't know if, if uh, people from from Florence know know that, but but it's a very well known club. Uh, uh, and obviously, especially in Denmark, uh, because of the the players that have played here have had all all had a, a great time, and, and that's. Um, yeah, that's, that's really nice, and, and I liked I liked that the, the fact that the city is the city is not so big, but everybody loves uh, Fiorentina. Yeah. I think that's a special feeling to play in a city where you really feel like everybody uh, is supporting and, and loving the club, and they are they are paying attention to what what is happening here. And, and for me, that's uh, that's a really nice feeling. It reminded me a little bit about. Uh, how, how it was in, in Odense because Berlin was a little bit different because the city is huge and very international and, and it's not it's not all people that, that are paying attention to, to what is going on even though the fan base there is also really really it's good crazy. Yeah, uh, but but here you you have a different feeling in the city like you go around you see the the flags are hanging around outside of windows and and, and uh, these stamps are everywhere yeah. <laughs> with the Fiorentina you, you really you really get the feeling of, of how the, the the people in the city love the club and that's that's nice to to, to try to go out and, and, and representing that uh, during the games give you a extra extra good feeling and what about the um, the viola park and and being here no of course here uh, we have uh, amazing staff uh, the head coach, Mister, and uh, and also the the, the goalkeeper coach, uh, the physical coaches. Do you speak? Uh, do, do they speak in Italian or English or uh, they, Danish? No, no, not not Danish. It's, <laughs> it's too difficult. But but um, yeah, they 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 try in it, Italian, and or if I don't understand it, I, I will ask. Uh, I'll ask to to get it in English if it's if it's uh, something regarding me or regarding the. the, the the defense. Uh, and how do you communicate with the defenders? Is that, uh, is it, that it, I, I, No, no, I, I pretty quickly picked up the, the difference, uh, the different... Uh, what was like the funniest word you picked up? Uh, like warm or solo? No, but I, I heard Very that, basic, yeah. Yeah, I heard that uh, because we had some, some South American players in, in Berlin and they were all the time saying solo, solo. Yeah. So I knew that one. Um, but uh, destra, sinistra, avanti, dietro, this this stuff I picked up, I picked up quite quite fast. It was. Uh, I think it's important that you you don't because none of the other defensive players in the defensive line they 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 all communicate in Italian and, and, and I think that's important that you don't come in and then confuse with the yeah. English words because. <laughs> Because it's just it's easier if I if I quickly learn it in Italian and then yeah I I I, I still have to improve uh, because yeah I'm starting from zero I didn't know any Italian when I came uh, so so that's uh, that's one of the um, right now that's one of the most important things for me too but you can speak English with the president with the uh, yeah uh, director you know yeah that's 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 really nice that that. I, that uh, we, we can speak in. I also think they, they they also think it's a little bit nice that, that yeah, it's, we, it's we, can, cool, yeah. we can speak in English uh, now. But but yeah, they obviously they done a lot of things for for this club and yeah, with the I think everybody saw with the grand opening. Uh, this facility, this training facility is is yeah, it's world class. It's, it's, it's one of the best. It's the best I ever seen. And and, and I think. Uh, also with the, it's also very Italian, like the, the style, the, the view over the Tuscany hills. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very, uh, it's very complete and, and it's, it's, it's uh, beautiful. And obviously you have, you have everything here. Yeah, Which, it's, what it's you need for a for football player. It's, yeah, it's, it's really nice. Before I let you go, a few things about, about yourself, like why the number 53? For example, and the uh, 53 is the postal code for for my city. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I think uh, that was a nice uh, little tribute for for my friends and family. Uh, What's the name? How do you pronounce the name of your your hometown? Kerimini. Okay. Yeah, 
Uh, so I think it was a nice trip before. I wrote it down, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not gonna go there. No, no, no. It's it's quite it's quite difficult to to pronounce, but yeah, it was uh, just a fun thing that I I, I was thinking about doing. Um, yeah, and uh, they also think is they also think that it's uh, it's nice. So yeah, it's just a little thing. Every time I call on the pitch, I. I I think a little bit of, of, of them of back home and yeah. Uh, That's really cool. It's one of the most interesting uh, reasonings but behind numbers actually yeah. um, that I've heard. And what do you do in your free time? You know, do you have any films, uh, TV series, books you read, uh, hobbies? Um, yeah, of course. I, I, I really like uh, basketball. Yeah. Uh, I watch... Uh, NBA. Uh, when I was in Berlin, I, I sometimes went to watch the Euroleague. Uh, so I, I like to I like to watch basketball, and I'm, I'm following it as good as I can. It's, NBA is difficult because it's three, four in the, in the night. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm obviously not uh, watching a, a lot of those games. Um, but but uh, I also like to yeah go for some walks with my girlfriend. It's more her that like to go. I just follow along. Uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, we we are also we love food as well, uh, trying different stuff, uh, different uh, kitchens. She she's a very good chef, <laughs> so so we are we having a good time with that. And, and yeah, uh, obviously uh, football is, is obviously the the main passion in in my life. And uh, what would you have been if not a footballer? <sighs> It's difficult, uh, difficult to say. I, I, I really, I, I don't think I ever thought about it. You know, Thierry Henry one, once answered this question, saying, uh, "An amateur footballer," yeah. because he loves it so much that he would have just. Played yeah, for at sure, a, for at sure. I, I would, I would have played no matter what. Uh, I always loved uh, playing football, and also not just, not just playing football, but also like the, the, the social life in it, like having a team. You do. Whatever you changing room, what, yeah, whatever you can for your teammates and the changing room, you have a lot of fun, uh, and and um, yeah, you're just getting a, a lot of good experiences with football. I mean, doesn't matter if it's professional, amateur, youth. It's like a f- fulfilling feeling in, in life to have to have football. It gives you gives you a lot. I often ask this question. I'm curious, how at such a young age, how do you deal with um, you know the the salaries, the money that comes in? Uh, because it's obviously a passion, but then it becomes a job. So, does that change your perception of, of things? I don't know. That, that, that's a tricky question. Uh, of course, it, it's a it's a job, but I think most of the guys they would do it anyway. They, they would play in the hometown or or whatever. And, and obviously, with the money also comes a lot of uh, pressure and uh, a lot of expectations, and and you're. Uh, people can be, uh, people can also be quite rude to you because you play football, and then yeah, that's that's a lot of a lot of things that, that that come with being a professional football player. How do you deal with the social media? Is it something you know you pay a lot of attention to? No, not really. I, I, I don't really, I don't really use a lot of time to it. I don't, I don't post that much either. Uh, I only post about football, not really so much about my private life, and I like to keep that to myself. Uh, so, so yeah, that's uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different aspects to it, but but uh, obviously, I would say that it becomes more like a job when you move away from, like from your family. Okay. Because I don't think, I, if you have to be honest, I would not live in Florence if it wasn't for football, or I wouldn't have lived in Berlin if it wasn't for football. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So, so that's uh, I think that's the uh, that's what make it more a job because you. You are far away from the people that you that you love, uh, and, and of, of course I have my my girlfriend here, which is nice. But still, my mom, dad, brother, friends, grandparents—they are still in Denmark. And, and if uh, if 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 I could, then I would uh, I would uh, I would have played the, or I would have have, have lived there uh, if if I didn't play football. But football is also my passion, so. Yeah, yeah. You obviously follow it. You know, put in a lot of hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess both mentally and physically. Yeah, exactly. You know, all round. Where do you see yourself in twenty years' time? In twenty years, I'm forty-three. So 
I'm probably retired. Who like knows? I, I probably retired uh, maybe for two or three years. I want to play until I can't. I can't anymore. Um, so, so I would say I'm, I'm probably uh, I'm probably back home in Denmark, living in my city. Uh, I would say. I, I think that that, uh, that my girlfriend have a dream that when we're done playing football, we go live in Japan for one or two years. All right. Yeah. Why not? That's her dream, and and uh, I think. I dragged her some different places now, and uh, when I'm done playing football, she, we can we can we can go live a place that that she chooses, and, and not not just me. Last question: What is your dream? Oh, I have a I have a lot of dreams. Um, obviously, uh, you want to try to, to to compete in the Champions League. You want to win a couple of trophies during your career career as well. And, and, and I think all of all of these dreams that I have are, are possible here. And uh, and I think the club is in a is is in a good it's in a good place and 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 I think we are we are allowed to to dream. Of course, you have to be always have to to be uh, realistic. But but uh, I think there is there is a good chance over the next five years that I have contract here that that, that we can make some of those dreams uh, come true. Hopefully. Uh, we could continue uh, improving and, and growing as a as a club and a city. That would uh, that would be yeah, that would be amazing to to to, to do that to do that. Yeah. Perfect way to to end this. Thank you so much, Oliver. Thank you. Thank you.